you want to have a career doing something that you love. And I was fortunate enough to be able to do that and I'm trying to share that with you. That's the number one part of getting people to start watching your videos. What kind of camera do I use? What kind of camera? Hey guys, I'm Brian the CEO and I created a YouTube channel with over 2 million subscribers and I want to teach you guys or give you guys some tips on how you can do it as well. I built a fishing channel and I'm currently working on another one, but whether you're fishing or trying just to create another type of channel, you can still use some of the tips from this video to help you along the way. First off, you got to treat it like a job. Building a channel, maintaining a channel, doing all the editing and everything, it requires a lot of time and dedication. If you're not willing to put in the time and dedication and, and the work and effort into creating something for yourself, then this isn't for you because it may seem like it's just all fun and games. You know, I'm just filming videos and stuff, but that's not the case. You gotta film the videos, you gotta come up with the concepts, you have to come up with the scripts, you have to get the video uploaded and do all the editing, do the SEO work, create the thumbnails. So it's a full-time job. If you're getting into this just to try and get famous and you don't think you really have to work hard, well, you got something coming to you. But if you're willing to do those things and you're willing to put in the time, then pay attention to the video because I'm gonna lay out some tips that will help you go viral in the future. One of the first things I always like to tell people is when you're creating content, number one, if you wanna work with the algorithm, you have to post consistently. That doesn't mean every single day, but you wanna post, say, on a schedule and at a set time a couple times a week. If, even if it's twice a week or it's four times a week, do it on the same day each week. For whatever reason, the YouTube algorithm appreciates that and they like the consistency. So stick to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, whatever combination you want, make sure that you stick to it because the people who follow you will get used to the schedule and they will be expecting content from you on that particular day at that particular time. Now let's get into the content itself. Number one, have a format and kind of stick to it. And what I mean by that is have your little teaser in the beginning, have a segment where you're talking, your intro and your video and your outro but stick to the same kind of format each time. Don't just start off the video and just have a straight video going. Don't have a four minute video here and then the next video you're doing a 20 minute video. Don't skip the intro and just go into a video and then have an outro. You know, you wanna have a format. My normal format would be 15 seconds of teasers, start the video, get people engaged into the video, have my intro, and then I let the video play out. So stick to the format and do not be afraid to tell people to subscribe and turn their notifications on because the YouTube algorithm will help those who are getting more subscribers and they will only send the notification out to those who turn on that bell. So just because you have a subscriber, a new subscriber, it does not mean that YouTube is gonna notify that person that you posted a new video. So you wanna make sure that you try to get them to hit that notification bell as well. So if you guys are liking this so far, hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell, especially if you like fishing in the outdoors because that's what I do here. But let's get back on track. I'm trying to help you guys grow so that you can actually earn money and create a career doing YouTube videos. Now that you have your format laid out, you wanna have a concept for each video. So whatever you're doing, you know, stick to it. I do fishing videos. So I stick to doing fishing content and then I kind of base whatever I'm doing in those videos on a fishing trip. So if I'm on vacation with my family, I will bring a fishing rod so that I can show the vacation, show my travels, show my trip to a restaurant and there's a canal in the back, but bust out a fishing rod and I can create content that way. If you do bikes, stick to bikes. If you do boats, stick to boats. If you do martial arts or whatever it is, stick to it people are going to start following you because of a specific type of content and that will keep them engaged. I do the fishing content, but I incorporate other things around it so that I'm still producing fishing and outdoor content. Now keep in mind, I've never done one of these videos before like this, but I am following the rules that I'm laying down for you. These tips, 
I wish someone told me in the beginning because it took me a long time to get to the point that I'm at, to where I'm living off of YouTube and off of my social media content. And ultimately, that's the goal, right? You want to live off of what you're creating. You want to have a career doing something that you love. And I was fortunate enough to be able to do that, and I'm trying to share that with you. Now, when creating your content, you can write down a script or you can kind of put footnotes as to what you want to touch base on. If I'm going and I know I want to do snook fishing, I know that I'm gonna talk about getting out in the water, I know that I'm gonna talk about what bait I'm gonna use or what lures I'm gonna use that day, about the weather and, and all those things. I, I always wanna check those off. And the biggest thing is I always wanna promote that I'm having fun doing it and that's what it's about. For me, that's what I want people to understand. So make sure you hit all the key points that you wanna discuss in your video and don't be afraid to make a mistake while you're talking on camera because I do it all the time. Obviously, there's a ton of cuts in this video and each time I'm making a cut, it's because I either I said something wrong or I'm stopping to think of what to say next. Okay, so don't worry about making cuts. And when you're talking to the camera, a lot of times people want to speak fast. They want to get the idea, the thought out of their head, but you start talking too fast and people lose interest. They don't want to follow along. So slow your words down. It'll allow your thoughts to keep up with the words coming out of your mouth and it'll allow you to convey whatever information and message you're trying to convey more clearly and better to your audience. Once you have your videos filmed and edited and you're uploading it, you have to make sure that the thumbnail is attractive. You don't want it to be too busy with too much stuff that distracts the viewer because remember, the thumbnails are smaller on the phone or on the screen. So if you have something that you can clearly see what the thumb is, people are more likely to click on it. If it's something that's super busy and you're trying to put a thousand words on the thumbnail and different special effects and graphics and stuff, Many times the people will pass by because it just doesn't grab their attention. So sometimes less is more and you just gotta make it clean and appealing. So don't overdo your thumbnails, make sure the colors pop and make sure that your titles are creative because that's the number one part of getting people to start watching your videos, the thumbnail and the title. If the thumbnail and the title do not pop they're not gonna click. So make sure you think it out. Think about how you're wording the titles. You know, if you wanna pop capital letters, something that just gets their attention, you know? So make sure you do your titles and your thumbnails very well because that is the number one thing to getting pe people to click. Once they click, using the same format and having content that is engaging is what's gonna keep them on the channel and ultimately create a fan that's subscribed with their notification bell on. That's the goal, right? Now, a huge question that I get is, what kind of camera do I use? What kind of camera? Well, I'm gonna tell you, you don't need the most expensive camera, okay? I have several cameras. My favorite camera right now is a DJI Pocket 3. It has a built-in gimbal, it's 4K, it has wireless mics that connect right to it, and it's just a beautiful camera. It has follow focus, so when I have it on a tripod and I move around when I'm filming by myself, it will follow me and I can move around my boat, I can move around the spot where I'm fishing without worrying about having to go turn the camera every time. This is a very handy camera if you're looking for something that has a built-in gimbal. See, look, everything stays level. You see that? Makes it nice and smooth and it's just a great camera. So I use the DJI Pocket 3 for certain scenarios. I also have the GoPro. Um, the Hero 10 is the one that I'm using right now. I use that for my chest mount or if I want a stationary camera mounted somewhere, you know, if I, I put it by a tree or just on a tripod from a side angle and then I have this one set up behind me so I can turn and move and talk. Because a lot of times when you're putting content together, if it's just one scene, sort of like how this video is, people will lose interest. You need something to keep their eye connected to the screen. So a lot of transitions and cutting back and forth from different points of view will help engage the audience and have them stay on the screen and stay on your video for a longer view time. Lots of clicks aren't as important as the amount of view time 
that they get once they click on that video. I mean, it's important, but the view time seems to really catapult your video into the uh, algorithm a lot higher. Another camera I use is the Sony ZV-E10. That's not the kit lens that comes with it, but you get the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens and it's a great starting point for a camera that has very clean footage. The screen flips back so if you're trying to vlog or you're filming yourself, you can see yourself on the screen and it's a lot easier to uh, speak to the camera like that. So this is a great camera. I like to use it for action shots when I'm, when I'm out fishing, especially if I'm filming someone else. I can get really in on them and I can move and follow the scene around so that the video is visually appealing and it has more angles and points of views. I also have an a7 III. So two cameras, one is a lot more expensive than the other one with a lot more expensive glass, but if you're starting out, you don't have to start out with the most expensive. You have to learn how to use these. If you wanna start with one of these, perfectly fine, but you still have to learn to use it. The lighting, where the sun is positioned when you're trying to film outside or shoot outside, even the lighting in here, it all is important to trying to create content that is visually appealing. I can shoot on this camera without lighting and without a good angle and a good f-stop and it's not going to look as good as if I shoot on this camera and I have everything set correctly. If I have my phone set correctly and I don't have this, the phone's going to look better. So you want to make sure that you learn how to use the lighting around you, the natural lighting and how to set everything so the, the, the video content looks nice. All right, let me set this down over here. The moral of the story is you don't have to have the most expensive equipment, but as long as you have a good lighting, good framing, you have good cuts in your editing, you stick to a specific format with a specific schedule for uploading, your channel will start to grow. But don't expect it to just blow up out of nowhere and the second you start doing this, you're gonna get views and stuff because it takes time. You'll get one or two subscribers today, one or two subscribers tomorrow, but every time you post, you go from three people looking at the video. Now you got six people looking at the video. Next you got 12, 15, 20, 100 people looking at the video and it keeps growing in the algorithm. So you have to have patience with the process. You have to trust the process. You don't wanna just go out there, post some videos and like, oh, no one's watching the channel, YouTube hates me, blah, 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 blah. You don't wanna do that. You want to stick to a plan, follow through with it, and execute everything in the manner that I'm trying to explain to you right now. And if you do that and your content is engaging, I have no control over that. That's on you, that, that part is on you. But if you implement good content with what I'm telling you, your channel will grow and I promise that you guys will start earning money on YouTube. You just can't give up and you just gotta put in the time and effort because Ultimately, that's what it boils down to. No matter what business you're in, if you don't put in the work, the time and the effort, you're always gonna fail. So I don't wanna see that for any of you guys. If you enjoyed this video or appreciate the information that I'm giving you in this video, make sure you hit that like button and drop a comment for me. And if you do like fishing in the outdoors, make sure you hit subscribe and turn on your notification bell right now. I hope this helps some of you. And uh, guys, that's it. Until next time, keep your head up, keep moving forward, and tight lines. Zzz.